girl had the audacity to. How would you finish that sentence? Allow God to work in your life to lead you without limits and do it so unapologetically. The Conversations at Ruby's Roundtable is about starting where you are with what you have, taking bold risks and betting big on yourself. That in a nutshell is exactly what I'm doing with this podcast, singing, developing a clothing line and mentoring after having the audacity to quit my TV news job. So I'm telling you about all the challenges and wins along the way. I'm also inviting familiar and respected risk takers, innovators, energizers, entrepreneurs from other careers you may know who are also beating the odds. Through these conversations at the table, not only will you have resources and takeaways to apply to your own journey, but all the motivation for you to take that leap of faith fearlessly. So will you have the audacity to join us? Let's just cut to the chase. This is your first podcast interview. Yes, it is. This is my first podcast show episode interviewee. Oh my goodness. (laughs) No, it's. I'm so honored though. I am that you chose me first. Listen, I'm honored that you were interested and that you really didn't ask me any questions. You're like, okay, never done it before. Let's go. So I love the confidence. Yeah. And we always had a good energy every time we seen each other. It was support, whether it was near or far. So when you asked me, I was like, yeah, okay. God didn't say no. (laughs) So yeah, I love that. God didn't say no. Yeah. Right. When people see you, when people see you working, when they see you with your son, when they see you out and about, what do you want them to know about you that may not come off from the start? Mm, That's a good question. I feel like when people see me out, they're like, oh, she's so serious. Mm. She's so stuck up. She's so bougie. And I'm just like, you don't even know the half like I'm so down earth right do you feel like you're that type of person where you just got to come have a conversation with me just ask me a question and it'll break the seriousness that they feel like they're seeing absolutely okay yeah absolutely okay. I feel that. Um, and ev- it's so crazy because every time someone does like get to know me and they're like oh my god like you're so cool like oh my god I was not expecting this and I'm like what were you expecting? <laughs> we don't give mean girl energy. So, right. Yeah. I love that. But sometimes I think maybe it's the aesthetic of, you know, you own your own business. You mm. are focused. You keep yourself to a high standard. Yeah. Then people might think, okay, maybe she's not approachable. But that's just an aura that means, hey, come correct if you're coming, right? Okay. That's <laughs> right there. <laughs> I love it. So why brows? <sighs> Which is crazy. Brows came to me when I was, uh, I can't even say an age, but I can say a year. Okay. Um, 2015. Mm-hmm. And when it came to me, I was working like endless jobs at the time. And I really couldn't even tell you, but it was almost like God dropped a gift on my heart. Like, I want you to do eyebrows. And I'm like, nobody's doing eyebrows. Mm. I'm like, the Chinese people at the time okay. were doing eyebrows, right. but we weren't. So when he, when it came to me, I was just like, okay, let me, let me see. Let me see what I can do. Right. And I knew then that it was something I was supposed to do because I had the confidence the next day. Okay. Like I practiced doing eyebrows. Okay. Saturday by Sunday, I was posting on Facebook, Ooh. like, I do eyebrows, come see me. Serious, straight to it. <laughs> yeah. So that's how you know when it's like, it wasn't forced. It right. was just like, it was so smooth. So what do people usually get when they come in here? So they normally get a brow tint or a okay. brow wax. A brow wax, of course, is like simple, but you get that brow tint to add a little pizzazz to it. Okay. So today we're going to do a brow tint on you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> come on.
So this is not the final process. I think it gotta marinate a little bit and then she gonna wipe it me off, wipe it down, and then be ready. I am so weak. Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> By the one and only. Okay. By the one and only. No, it's good. It looks so good. I came in looking one way, going out looking like, yeah, yeah. What? So, <laughs> how you feeling? Oh. Mm. <laughs> I feel like. Like, what you feel like doing? I feel like I need to go up several places so okay. people can see me. Okay. You know, I mean, <laughs> the legs is Don't up. even need no makeup because I got Kiki brows mm -hmm. on me. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, thank you so much. You're this so is, welcome. This You're so silly. <laughs> yes, you can afford the house. You just need the right person to make it easy for you to realize it is already yours. Someone who knows the market, has the right relationships to support you, and keeps their finger on the pulse of the community. So what are you waiting for? Just start the conversation. Because you are the key to making it happen. And that house is ready for you to call it home. What have you learned about yourself? I learned that pretty much, um, one, I learned about business, how to operate a business. Right. Um, and I learned how business minded I was at such a young age. Okay. So that right there was just something that was mind blowing because I was never taught that. I've okay. never seen it before being done. Right. So entrepreneurship in a, as a, as a whole. So. Just knowing, I was like, oh, where, you know, in your mind, you're like, where is this coming from? Right. How do I know how to operate this? Or right. How do I know how to lead other people? So it really just taught me to be a great businesswoman and knowing that, like I said, at a young age, I was able to do that. Right. Did you take any business classes or get any mentorship on Nothing. business? Nothing. All experience. Oh, wow. Along the way. Yeah. I love that just yeah. because a lot of people, even myself, like, had to take business classes to understand structure because a lot of people are creative, but not a lot yeah. of people know how to handle business. Yeah. So for it to come so naturally. Right. And that's how you know that that's a God. Right. That wasn't me operating. That was literally God operating through me, teaching me how to start the business, how to connect with women, right. showing me just the different ropes of the business as a whole and got me to this point. I started in the living room <laughs> mm. and then I started to tour. Then I started to sell products. So, and then now I have a storefront and in that whole entire time, I never had a mentor to like help me guide me. Oh, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to budget. I learned how to save on my own just from the experience of seeing my mom not being able to handle her finances correctly. Right. So, yeah. I feel like <laughs> it was definitely ordained just because if you were able to start 2015 before yeah. the pandemic mm -hmm. and still thrive how you are now, God has been ordering your steps each way. Yeah, way. Yeah. When you're on these trainings, what are some of the common questions? Is, is it about the business or is it about how you structure your business? How can you operate, build relationships? Um, mainly just like, how can I build the clientele? Okay. How can I get where you are right now? Mm. Um, and then they, of course, ask a lot of questions when it comes to the techniques too, just like learning little bits and pieces, color theory. Um, what else are they asking? Just everything that's dealing with brows, basically. Right. Yeah. But do you want to go straight into this is how I got to where I am now? Or do you kind of back them up a little bit and say there are steps? Oh, yeah, definitely okay. back them up. Start from the very beginning. Let them know the journey, how I got to this point right now and literally taking them through the process. So when you were in Ohio, mm -hmm. were you doing eyebrows there in 2015 or was it in Charlotte? 
No, it was in Ohio. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was one of the best brow techs in Ohio. Hey, speaky. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Loud and clear. Um, but then I just got to a point to where I was feeling so unfulfilled there after okay. so long. And that's what led me to Charlotte. Is it because it's home? Um. Yes. And no, okay. because it's like home, you feel safe. You got your family and stuff there. Right. So, but it was just also, I knew like my spirit knew that there was more for me. Right. And it was like, if I stay here, I won't reach that. I won't get that. Right. And so I knew it was time for me to go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why Charlotte? <laughs> Is there something else behind that? No. Okay. No, that's okay. so funny okay. because I want to know why Charlotte too. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, no, but I knew once I got here and I had journaled about coming to Charlotte okay. like almost a year. And so I was like, okay, God, like where you want me to go? I right. feel it that you want me to move, but move where? So at the time it was Atlanta, LA, mm. it was Charlotte. It was like all these different places. Mm. And he literally was like, go to Charlotte. Mm. And I'm like, why there? I'm like, Atlanta is popping. You know, right. everybody support each other. I know I could feed off the other. I was like, why Charlotte? Because at the time, you know, 2019, right. it was, Charlotte was Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> it was very much country. Right. <laughs> and so when I got here, he just revealed to me, he said, I wanted you, gonna, I wanted you to come here because I wanted you to make a name for yourself. And not fall into the shadows of all the other brow techs in those other places where it's already popular. Right. So I was like, all right. And here we got are. it. Right. <laughs> the obedience. So, yes, basically. Okay. Yeah, so, um, but it's been beautiful. You know, it has its ups and downs, its ebbs and flows. But other than that, it's been a beautiful journey. So what made you start touring going from, okay, Ohio, we starting Charlotte, we're moving. And then now I'm going to go to different places so I can show the girls. Was that something that you've always wanted to do teach or was it just another step in the journey? Um, it was another step in the journey. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. It was another step in the journey. Mm-hmm. I'm actually started teaching in Ohio. Okay. Too. Okay. okay. So okay. everything literally started in Ohio, but mm. it, it just maximize and expand here, even though I was starting over here, right. but it still maximized. Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give me a little bit more about the process of a client walking in, them getting their eyebrows done some people may look at it as like, okay, just the eyebrows. Is it a different experience for you, each client? Oh yeah. Everybody eyebrows is different. Every face shape is different. Everybody's energy is different. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely different each and every client that walks in. But one thing I've learned is when you have a good energy with those clients, um, even if they're having a good day or a bad day, and when they're having a bad day, I know how to shift the energy. When they're having a good day, I know how to feed off that energy to make sure each and every client, no matter how they feel, be able to walk in and walk out feeling like a different person. So. Right. Mm. So it's per- <laughs> it's being personable at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like a therapist at work sometimes. Mm, not a therapist. I can yeah. see it. I can see it. I can see it. Because they want to talk to you. They want to, you know. Tell tell you about their day, what's going on, and right. and sometimes I feel like I can I know how to feel people's energy, right? And so even the way that they might look and not even notice the eyebrow being raised, I'm like, you okay? You want to talk about mm. it? They're like, how you know something wrong? Right. I'm like, I could just feel it, right? And I and you know sometimes you see it, so. right? No, that's yeah. good because you never know some. Body might walk in there and didn't even know they needed to meet you. Right. They're thinking, I'm just going to get my eyebrows done, you know, just got paid right. or I'm about to go on a date or out of town. Yeah. And they meet you and just get a whole different experience just yeah. because you pay attention mm-hmm. to your clients. Mm-hmm. I like that. So what interests me the most so far about our conversation is you saying you getting your finances together. Mm-hmm. So... For someone watching this who is starting a business, who is wanting to get into entrepreneurship, how do you kind of advise them to 
not spend so early and either invest that into themselves or in the business first when things start rolling? I would say prioritize first. You Mm got to prioritize what's important in that moment. And what's important is you invest into your business so it can multiply so you can enjoy it later. So you have to be able to literally be disciplined. That's the biggest thing when it comes to your finances. And like for me, like I said, seeing my mom, I was like, she ain't managing her money well. Right. So I was like, I know that that's what? not something that I want to do. Right. So I started to save. I cut back on like going out, doing things, you know, when I was younger. Right. I cut back on all that and I just had tunnel vision. So I would say you definitely got to be disciplined when it comes to your finances. Especially when you're trying to break generational curses exactly. because you can forgive your family for whatever steps they had to take, but it's learning from that and figuring out. But in this, in this society of, oh, social media, I want this, or this person has this. Mm -hmm. How do you advise someone to say discipline when there's so many different, I guess, vices, um, different things around that may make them think, oh, I have to pay into that to make sure I'm looking the part. I feel like that just goes down to knowing who you are within God, to be honest. Right. Like once you know who you are in God, once you know what's for you, you won't feed into what everybody else is doing or right. what you feel like you need. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be able to get that because he knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you need. Right. And he also knows your wants as well. So it's just like you got to be able to not even feed into that because you know who you are in your heart. Right. So. What would you say your big financial advice or something that maybe you learned along the way or you would say, okay, this took the turn in my finances that you could give to someone else? Mm, Learn. I I know that I feel like everybody says this. Well, I guess like the millionaires, billionaires Mm -hmm. or whatever, but they always say you got to have seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody took that context as I have to have seven different businesses Mm -hmm. and operate them. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I always say find those seven streams of income within one business. Mm. That's the smartest thing that I've ever done in my business. Okay. I was able to find five different streams in one thing, which was eyebrows. Okay. And I was able to continue to keep multiplying and multiplying off of it. Okay. So that, that's my biggest advice is just find those streams within that. Within that one entity. Okay, so I'm gonna have you break it down. So we have eyebrows. <laughs> we got eyebrows at the top. That's yeah. the bread and the butter. Mm-hmm. So, what are the other streams? Or could you kind of give me an example of if someone is going into brows? Yeah. How could they break it down in in that same business? Because so that's interesting that you said that. Mm-hmm. So you have, of course, eyebrows. Okay. You as a person, you're already a service provider, so mm-hmm. you're doing the eyebrows. So you have that revenue from your clients. Then if you have employees, whether that's one or whether that's just five, how many you have, that's also revenue from them. Then you're teaching classes in person. You also have online products, which you're creating eBooks and stuff. So that's Mm -hmm. four. And then you're selling products. Listen, you just dropping gems. I feel it. I feel it. Listen, it's like either you're going to get it done or you ain't. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Um, So how do you stay organized? Do you have a certain routine, a day? to day that it's like, okay, this is how I can get all this done. Cause you, you own in the business, you the, yeah. you the brand, you the face. Then if you have employees, then if you have the products, we maybe the manufacturers, maybe the look of it, how are we staying organized to be able to bring in those uh, different streams? Of course, just investing into the platforms that's needed for each and every entity. So you got like Square, you have, okay. you have HoneyBook, you have Asani, Asana, I think this is called Asana. You have um, Shopify, like all those different platforms. You're going to need them in order to operate right. each and every every business. Okay. So, but of course, I would say now that I have a baby, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I have to literally like plan out my weeks. Okay. Literally. So even just with the employees, managing employees, because right now, you know, I'm just kind of managing everything. Right. I'm at that point. And so with him, his activities, girl, I have to use reminder, the reminder on on our phones, (laughs) Um, that my notes, like Mm -hmm. I have to use those things in order to keep me organized and make sure I'm just on track throughout the week. So Mm, Because... 
you got to stay ready for yeah. any moment, mm-hmm. for any influx, for any change, you disruption. Do. Because if you are managing so many different areas, it's like if you don't stay on top of it, then mm. how are you going to bring in that revenue? Exactly. Exactly. So got to stay organized. I don't know about everybody else, but I can't operate under um, pressure too much. Okay, okay, I, okay. It has to I, be. U- I used to be. I okay. used to definitely like, oh, the pressure, the adrenaline, the hustle and bustle. But now I'm like, Mm-mm, we got to slow it down a little bit. Right. Taking one step by, you know, step by step and just. And just flow with it. But yeah, I got to stay organized. <laughs> okay. Is there a one um, technology software or program that you would recommend the most that's helping you stay organized? Like one is like, I can't do nothing without this one. Not really. Okay. No. I, I honestly would say the reminder app on our mm. phones. That's actually helpful just because you can check mark everything that you need to get done you can check mark it out it disappears and you can make different lists on there so you got like the grocery list you have like the to-do list for my son i got the to-do list for me right. business and i can go through one of those and check them out so okay that helps me yeah speaking of your son for those who are watching this her son is very close nearby <laughs> And before you got out of the car, I told you, just do it. That's what's on his shirt. Um, If there was a piece of advice that you would give a young entrepreneur who is like, I got to break this generational curse. I need to move away from home. Mm -hmm. I am about to have a child, but I want to follow my dreams. I want to keep going. Mm -hmm. How would you tell her to just do it? Cause you, you doing it. Entrepreneur, yeah. mom, yeah. author. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Let <laughs> us know. Let us know. I would just say, honestly, um, you just got to have faith. You literally have to have faith. Your faith has to be bigger than anything else, bigger than any person, bigger than anything that you can think of, whatever it is, you have to have faith and know that you can do it. And if God put it on your heart to move away, to have this baby, then that means you can do it. Why would he, why would he put it on your heart? Right. Cause you can do it, right? You can do it. <laughs> if not you, who? Right. If not you, who? So did things turn up a notch for you in terms of the hustle, the grind, the motivation when you had your son? Yes and no. Okay. So I feel like you always see those like posts. Oh, when I had my kid, it made me hustle harder. It mm-hmm. made me do this and made me do that. But in reality, I was already in that mindset before Mm -hmm. I had my son. So in my case, it made me slow down. Mm. It made me start seeing things differently. It made me start living in the moment more. Okay. Um, And now that he's like of age, I feel like once you get through that first year, let's start there. The first year, (laughs) you kind of out the woods a little bit. Like, okay, he's healthy. I got him at the newborn stage. And now... You know, it's time to get back to it, but it actually made me slow down, which I'm so, so grateful for. Right. Yeah, because I was able to see every little step that he was like, the the growth, everything about him. I was able to see it and just live in that moment with it. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Would having a team and delegating and being organized also help with that a bit? Are you glad that you were a little bit more, I don't want to say... Uh, season in your business mm-hmm. to say, okay, when this happened, I'm going to be okay. Like we're going to be, the business is going to be okay. Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, when I had Carter, he, I feel like all hell kind of broke loose mm. to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I only say that is because I just had, I just got the building when I found out I was pregnant with him which was unexpectedly. So I'm thinking I was also in the middle of a tour. Right. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm getting off this tour Mm -hmm. as I'm up fit in my shop. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's about to boom. I'm good. I'm out here. I'm cute. I'm fly. You Mm -hmm. know, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, whoop, (laughs) you forgot about this. Mm. (laughs) And so I feel like things were just now 
coming together. Okay. Yeah. With the spa specifically. Right. It was just now coming together. So when I had Carter, everything wasn't structured properly. But as time kind of went on, it started to come together and start to become more structured. And like now is the moment where I was able to, now that he's older, I'm able to really focus on getting it structured how I wanted to. So. Okay. Yeah. So talk about this recent post, you pivoting, stepping away from possibly doing the trainings. You're going to do it another time, but Mm -hmm. what's, what's the pivot? Oh, Jesus. This is the pivot. Mm. I'm sitting here with you. (laughs) So being more face forward, speaking, talking about who you are, what you do. Yeah. Okay. Just really coming out of the shell and just really just going forth with it, honestly. So this is the pivot. I don't know what is coming as far as, but I know it's going to be big. I know it's going to be big. It's going to be real big. Yes, I can already feel it. Mm. So um I'm just excited to be in this position. You okay. know, I really am. And just having a great team. Right. Um, Just having a healthy baby in the process. And just God is just like, let's go. Let's do it. It's time. Yes, you can afford the house. You just need the right person to make it easy for you to realize it is already yours. Someone who knows the market has the right relationships to support you and keeps their finger on the pulse of the community. So what are you waiting for? Just start the conversation because you are the key to making it happen. And that house is ready for you to call it home. As you think about what that pivot looks like, is there something that other than I'm down to earth, other than this is how I can show you how to make different streams or Mm -hmm. this is my story. Is there something that this is what I need you to know raw, uncut when you hear from me each time? This is going to be my message. Do you kind of have that laid out? Mm, That's a good question. Let me let me. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. The baby's still asleep. I hear him snoring right. over here. You know, he said, take your time, but just do it. Um, one thing I was saying each and every time somebody just comes encounter with me, period, whether I'm on their podcast, whether it's just out in public, I just want you to be able to see God through me. Like, I want you to be able to literally see him through me. Like, if you see me out, like, oh, yeah, she got God written all over her. Like, that's what I want you to see and want you to encounter and hoping that you will be able to follow that same thing. So, yeah, mm. <laughs> this Ooh. is this is a this is a full surrenderance yeah. in my life right now. Like just fully surrender, just letting go of all my desires, my wants, what I, you know, everything that I want is just like, you got it. You got a big dog. <laughs> mm, I feel it. Yeah. I yeah. feel it. I, I, I like that you can be comfortable and I can feel that it's easy for you to let that go and let that out mm-hmm. and, and say that, Hey, I'm walking by faith. Mm-hmm. And when you walk by me or walk up to me, here, here's some, I got some yeah, for you too. Go a little. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I received that. Yeah. I received that. Yeah. And hopefully when people do come up to you, they just feel some sort of courage or some yeah. sort of energy to just feel it. If she can, like yeah. I can, yeah. no matter where that is. Cause some people might not be on a, a journey spiritually, right. but maybe through you, they're like, okay, I can kind of figure it out. Or maybe through you, mm-hmm. okay, it's not going to be uncomfortable. I just have to go with it and, mm-hmm. and trust that it's going to be okay. Cause yeah. some people need that. Yeah, they do. They definitely do. So that's what I want them to encounter. Like I want you to feel empowered. I want you to feel inspired every time that you talk to me or any class that anybody come to or just just a regular conversation with my girls or uh, that's how I want you to feel when you leave. So Mm, and they will. Yeah, they will. Are you nervous that about this being your last tour? Uh, Nervous? No. Okay. 
Emotional, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like when you birth something for so long, right? You put so much time, sweat, energy, tears, mm. all of that into something, and it's like when God just say it's time to let this go because I have something bigger for you. That's you know, that's a breakup. Uh, are you ready for the breakup? I, I mean, I know we walking by faith, but are you ready for the breakup? Is it still am, tugging you? I am now. Okay, okay. I am now. It took me about, <laughs> mm, I would say about like three months that I was just like crying. I'm like, no, this isn't fair. Like, you know, I did this. It's mine. But now that I'm in this space and where I am right now, I'm like, First of all, God, it wasn't even mine to begin with. Mm. It was always yours. So why am I telling you about something that was already mm. yours? And so it's just like you can have it back because I know every step that you've taken me through or taken me through. It's been bigger than the last. Literally, it's always been bigger, always. So. I'm Girl, excited. you gonna have to keep on speaking because you gonna give you gonna give women big confidence. I'm <laughs> confident, but you give me big confidence just by you speaking. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? <sighs> this is gonna be beautiful because yeah. I just think in a world where women are curious, asking why, why mm-hmm. not, just trying to figure it out. You you need somebody to hype you. You need somebody yes, to be like, that girl, is true. Yes, that is true. That is true. keep doing it. Yeah. Keep doing it because you're just going to get that energy back and you're yeah. going to give somebody else that energy mm-hmm. or somebody going to be like, girl, have you met so-and-so? Yeah, like if she... you need something, go, go, go listen <laughs> to her. Because she, she got some. Right. Yeah, for sure. Listen, and it all started with a a order from God in Ohio saying, Hey, I need you to do this. I need you to move to Charlotte Mm -hmm. and you're here in Charlotte and you are, or have blossomed into this person, but about to step into a whole nother level that may not be so visible right now, but it's all going to work out. Yeah, it definitely is. I definitely feel I've already stepped into the new level. You have, you are, we in it right now. We we, in it. Today, level one. (laughs) Level one. Level oh, one of the it. new level. Right. Yes. I've yes. already did everything. You know, when you think about it and when you've accomplished so much and what you already have done, it's just like, okay, I've done the tours. I've sold the products. Mm-hmm. I've opened the shop. I've done like what, you know, what else could you really, really do in that? You know? So it's just like, you've done everything that you were supposed to do in that moment. Right. Now it's time for the, the next level. Right. Yeah, I'm so, so excited for you. I'm so excited for you. I'm excited for you. This is, this is huge. (laughs) Listen, hey, level one. Level one. Level one. (laughs) I love that. Okay. So I want you to finish a sentence for me. Okay. Um, girl have the audacity to, how would you finish that sentence? Girl have the audacity to let God Literally, uh, allow God to work in your life to lead you without limits and do it so unapologetically. That's what I would say. Girl, have the audacity to let him do his thing. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let him do it. Yeah. Unapologetically. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> girl, well, woman to woman, I'm going to tell you, girl, have the audacity to push beyond level one to be confident Aww. to walk in it to so own sweet. it <laughs> to be it to see it through mm-hmm. and you're gonna be okay yes same for you girl you doing it it's it's everything for listen you. Let's just say we, everything I, i'm just everything. marrying you but you get me i'm marrying you we sitting at the table together okay listen and this is not the last, it ain't the last. it's not it's not level one. Oh, i one. love that i love that keep that keep that talk okay keep that talk. Oh, yeah, keep that talk. <laughs> not that. Says, like, Let me. yeah level one because it's yeah. power in that it's power in the beginning mm-hmm. it sure is You gotta win the day.